What is going on guys? Walk with me for a little bit. This is gonna be my final video of my solar setup I'm doing in the garage. If you can hear me with the, uh, my AC's running. But as you folks know, maybe I installed 800 watts worth of solar panels up on my canopy. I wanted just a little bit more uh, umph because my Blue Eddy AC300, I can put two strings of solar inputs onto that thing. I'm a little late to this. Unfortunately, I wanted to put what I'm about to show you up on my pergola as well. It's just simply too hot to do that and to run the MC4 cabling through my attic in July in Texas. It's too hot up there. So I was looking around my backyard here. I've got a lot of fence line that I'm not using. It is not the most optimal, but it's a lot of real estate that I'm not using. So what I did was I got two 200 watt Bouge RV solar panels and I mounted them directly to my fence. And I know what you're thinking, guys, that's stupid. Um, it's 90 degrees to the sun. Yes, I agree, but it's still giving me more than I thought that it would. And I'm gonna show you folks today. You can tell the, the clouds really, really kind of poor solar conditions out here right now. But what I ended up going with these are kind of brand new to the market. They are the Bouge RV Topcon 200 watt solar panels. These things are crazy. They're bifacial uh, panels, meaning that it really doesn't work in this situation. But if you have any type of reflective surface behind this solar panel, it'll help kind of bounce some of that solar energy back up underneath it and you get more wattage out of it, which makes these have a little bit higher voltage. The VOC on these things is around 36 volts. So they're a little bit higher in terms of a regular 200 watt panel. What makes these things really cool is you see this kind of little middle line right there. These solar panels, again, each one of these is 200 watts. It's kind of split with bypass di diodes. And I know this might not uh, make a whole lot of sense, but essentially it's two 100 watt panels in one 200 watt panel. So I can completely shade this portion of the solar panel and it's not gonna completely deplete the output like most normal solar panels, where if you put a little bit of shade, it kind of kills the entire output. With this having kind of two separate 100 watt panels, it can get shade on half of this and still provide output. So with two of these tied up to the fence, and you can see I just use standard solar panel mounting brackets. They only weigh 21 and a half pounds a piece, so they're a little bit lighter, they're a lot smaller than regular 200 watt panels. I could load up this fence if I wanted to. I'm not gonna do that, but it's just in a kind of, of an additional little 400 watts. I've never gotten 400 watts, obviously the way that they're mounted, but I've, I've seen it get between 250 to 350 watts. We're gonna check it today. I'm not gonna be getting that much, but it's got the black in it. And also I like these cause it's got the black anodized frame. So looking at it from my street, it's not a super ugly eyesore because you can see through the backyard so i do like the fact that it's got the black kind of frame around it and i'm on, since i'm not going up through the roof i'm actually using i made uh the cabling with 12 volt landscape wire as you can see here nothing's really mounted permanently but that landscape wire is just going behind the solar panels and i got 100 feet of the 12 volt uh, 10 gauge landscape wire. It's actually rated up to a thousand volts. I was surprised to see that on the spec sheet. It's not rated for interior wall use, so I didn't run it through my attic. But let me show you the output that I'm getting right now because, again, I'm kind of surprised. And you can see my dog there, but there they are just hanging up there on the ceiling. But again, it's just kind of like an additional little, little added umph to my big my big stuff so let's go up here i'm going to change the microphone okay so if we can see here i'm pulling 738 watts of total solar if i click this my dc input one that's my big 800 watt panel i'm only getting 513 watts which is kind of typical it's 10 a.m here in texas I am getting 230 watts off of my DC2. Those are those two 200 watt Bouge RV panels. Now I know you're probably saying that doesn't sound like a lot, but again, those things are not mounted. They're not angled perfectly at the sun. Uh, and they're 90 degrees to the horizon. So uh, really kind of the worst place that you could put them. But for me to be able to get 230 watts off of that, I couldn't be happier. 
So if I go back, again, I'm pulling 747 total watts off of those. So long story short, let me close my door before my dogs escape. <clears throat> um, given the way that my house is situated, um, I, I don't want to put anything on the roof. We're not going to be here forever. And it's too hot for me to get on my pergola to really mount those things to where those other two 400 watt panels are. I will be doing that probably in the winter time because that setup surprisingly outputs quite a bit of power. It tops off this whole thing. And those Topcon panels out there, I don't think I mentioned, they've got 16 bus bars, which is the most that I've seen really out of any company out there producing 200 watt, 300 watt, 100 watt panels. So they're, they're very shade tolerant. They got 16 bus bars, they got high voltage, they're lighter and they're smaller and they're around the same price as a standard 200 watt panel. So to me, it was kind of, of a no brainer to go with that version of 200 watt panels. And you can see, well, you can't see now, but it was giving me pretty good output for how I had to mount them. So I'm able to get on average when perfect sun, no haze between my two 400 watt panels and those two 200 watt panels, I'm able to get around 850 to 950 watts for this battery bank. And again, I know that doesn't sound great by any means, but with my system, with my setup, how I have to put my solar panels, it's a lot more than I thought I was going to be able to get. And it's a heck of a lot better than me having to drag out solar panels and put them out on my driveway, you know, every day when the weather's good to try to top off this battery bank and not use AC grid to keep it running. In fact, I'm not, I haven't had to use AC grid to top off this battery bank in about two weeks. It's feeding off of those solar panels. And I only have this Blue Eddy running my garage fridge and my indoor fridge continuously. So it's only pulling two, 300 watts an hour max. But again, with the solar panels that I have out there, I haven't had to, I haven't had to use AC grid charging to keep these batteries topped off. So I just wanted to do a kind of, of a really quick update. Um, this is kind of the final step in what I'm gonna do to this house in terms of solar. So I've got a, I've got technically 1200 watts of solar never seen it get that high but if you've got a lot of fence line and it's facing south this is a good option to use i can even get those those angled mount brackets and i could screw those into the fence to angle these solar panels up and i'm thinking about doing that but uh, those add quite a bit of weight to the solar panel and i don't know how sturdy this fence is and you know i don't know if i don't know if i'm going to do that but that is an option if you wanted to really truly angle these you could ground mount them but this was just the easiest, the quickest. And uh, I think for the way that they're set up, I'm, I'm very pleased with getting on average around 300 watts on a perfect day again at around 1 p.m. with them being 90 degrees to the horizon. So gang, that's kind of the last update for my little solar setup. But as usual, I'll leave a link down there. There might even be a coupon code. I'm not sure yet, but if there is, then those Topcon panels will be even cheaper than the standard regular 200 watt panels at least from bouge rv so take a look down in the description below and uh until next time see you soon